Hi, this is Chris Straub at Straub Technologies. I want to introduce a new product that will be available to both shops and racers. And what we have here is a checking fixture for distributor gear lash between the camshaft and the distributor gear. Now these were actually tools that were designed by John Callies uh, for the NASCAR teams because they found with the engines over 7200 that they would get a lot of spark scatter. Distributor, and this is a backlash checker for the pinion on your distributor to the cam gear. Boom. Okay, so you're so when the, the bore in here, you're trying to find out how much backlash, because you would never set a ring and pinion up without checking the backlash. But yet we just assume everything's right. And what started is that down at uh, Roush and Yates. Yeah. Yeah. Once they went over 7200 the spark scatter would go everywhere. And so then they started having a timing light just set permanently on mm -hmm. the dyno. Well, when I went down there, they had like 23,000s backlash. And so we made up gears in 2000s increments. And so we, I wanted to be down at no lower than 6,000s backlash. And we did gears See, that's a pressed on gear I made mm -hmm. at Camshaft Machine. So we'd press this gear and uh, at uh, Morel we made both gears. Got it. Okay, so now you had, you could have the root of the tooth not getting ever contact with this, and then you could have the size to get six thousandths. Once you hit six thousandths, you run away nine thousand, it never changed. It's smooth all the way through. And of course now, now oh, still don't have it. So would, how many, <laughs> how much do, Timing degree variance would there be with that too much backlash at high RPM? That would ruin it. That's what I'm saying. When you're when you're up at ten, mm -hmm. up, but most of the stuff you get, because the difference is on a camshaft, you come in and have to go down and hob straight. There's a cam gear. When we build this, we are running across. So with the lead in, the lead out's perfect, and same with this gear. Well, you can't do that when you plunge hob. So that gives a bigger variance. So when you mate these two, which comp buys these, mm -hmm. bullet buys these, you know, and that just solved it. And uh, I never got to selling these, but a lot of people, I'd send them pictures and- They figured and how to make them. them. Yeah. So you're saying well, with that, say 23,000 backlash versus six, you could have several degrees variance in timing easy easy but the worst thing is when you get your rpm up it starts to chatter and that throws the timing light off and you get this spark scatter when i did the first gears i my test was on the spintron 50 weight oil mm -hmm. you'd start it up and instantly rev it up to 6000 so you had high pump pressure a standard gear would go 35 seconds. And it would shoot up. It would. It was gone. 35 seconds. First one I tested with Roush went 200 hours. Wow. Hmm. Big difference. Not a small difference. Big difference. So these fixtures will actually allow the individual or the engine builder to check his uh, lash just like you would setting up a rear gear. Uh, in a uh, rear end housing. This will give you proper lash. So this is the Ford tool and this is how it comes to you in the case. We'll ship it. This will be a rental program so uh, you'll call up, rent the tool, we'll send it to you and you check your lash. This and then we have the fixture for the Chevrolets. So this will um, check any small block Chevrolet or big block Chevrolet. It also is a slip collar uh, tool so anything you've got, tall deck, uh, short deck, anything that's been milled, uh, there isn't really any small block Chevrolet or big block Chevrolet engine you won't be able to check. Chevrolet, so Chevrolet comes with two tools. Since we have slip collars for the Chevrolets, we have also include the fixture to check your proper distributor depth. And we'll be showing you that in the instructional video that's coming up right after this. Alright guys, we're going to check some distributor uh, gear lash, but first of all we have to verify what the proper depth that our distributor is going to be in our Chevrolet motor. So this is the depth checking gauge. So there's three things that you have to know about this piece. This line references where you need to be as far as height wise, and that is referenced on the shaft. This flat right here represents uh, where the distributor 
gear from will ride on the camshaft gear. This flat needs to be facing driver's side. So when you install this, you want to install this driver's side, that flat facing the driver's side. And then as far as the slip collar, all you'll need is a 964 key stock for adjusting the collar. All right, let's check our distributor on our big block chip. All right, I would recommend, because this tool is very slippery, I would lay this up in the intake manifold or lay it down right here. Now remember guys and gals, we said we've, that notch has got to face driver's side. So we will install this driver's side. See how it slips down? Twist it just a little bit. We are engaged, okay? So now we're going to add the shaft and of course the slotted end that goes towards the oil pump, the oil pump slot. And if Mike, you can see right there where our line is, okay? So right now, I've already loosened this slip collar. We're going to raise this up until that aluminum piece is right in line with that line and then you want to tighten that slip collar so you can see guys and gals this is notched okay and it's got a back notch and you can see we're right at our depth size right there now again I would pull that out because it likes to slide out and pull that tool out now this area down here, it represents the distributor gear. So you'll take this and put it against your distributor and you'll measure, your, take your slip collar and adjust it so it's the same height as this collar. All right, now we need to set our backlash checking fixture with the height uh, tool that we just checked this block with to verify what we needed for proper depth of the distributor. So again, there's a slip collar on the checking fixture You'll take that checking fixture that you just checked the depth with and with a small level or straight edge, you'll put that across and then you'll set your last checking fixture and tighten that slip collar. All right, we need to place the tool down in here. Now remember, you're engaging the oil pump, so you gotta get this right. So that isn't gonna work. So it just might take you a little time. Go back a two. There you go. Now we're snug. Go ahead and install your distributor clamp. Okay, and this is your center line right here. You need to start on one of those arrows. It does not matter which one, just one of them. When I move this, we're checking it we're right at, well, I should say about 14 thousandths. Said I need, I guess I need to put my eyes on. Anybody that's 55 years old knows you need these things. All right, yeah, we're at 14 thousandths. Okay. We got the arrow here, we got our gauge, we got our lock down. All right, we're gonna maintain what we've got right here and we're gonna rotate the motor one of these lines, which is, represents 120 thousandths. All right, we've rotated the motor to our second line for another 120 degree check. You wanna loosen the distributor clamp and then you just want to push the entire fixture until it stops and you'll feel it stop okay when it stops you got the resistance you want to go ahead and tighten the bolt again and now it will move so we're at zero always check to be sure you are starting at zero so at our second checking point, we are 13 thousandths, 13 thousandths. Now why are we checking it in multiple places? Because it's a round gear. So we want to be sure that we get an average of that round gear. As you see, we're rotating the motor. All right, we're going to loosen. Show them that it's tight, it won't move. Okay, oh yes, so it won't move. Okay, you're loaded up against that oil pump. So you want to loosen it. You want to push it clockwise and you'll feel the resistance. Now you want to tighten it again. Snug that thing down, doesn't have to be overly tight. Okay, here's our third and final reading. Are we on zero? No, we're off on zero just a little bit. So loosen your dial bore gauge. 
you're at zero snug it to keep it now we've got movement all right we got about thirteen and a half thousandths is what we've got so we had fourteen we had thirteen and we had thirteen and a half so I can do some quick and math right now and the average of those three is going to be thirteen and a half because we're right in the middle of it so if we're going for a range and we have gears from three thousandths all the way to fifty five thousandths you're going to want a gear for thirteen and a half thousandths and we're range is somewhere between five and seven so we're going to go with a six gear which would give us about seven and a six nine about a six thousandths gear okay so you want a six thousandths oversized gear for this engine and this is what it needs and this is one of our customers and we'll be putting a six thousandths oversized gear in his motor this really needs to be done on any engine over 7,000 RPM. The NASCAR boys would gain somewhere between 20 horsepower, but that's a 20 horsepower average. That's not at peak. So if your engine runs, operates in an operating range above 7,000 RPM, you need to check your lash between your camshaft and your distributor gear. And again, at Straub Technologies, we carry three sixes, nines, twelves, fifteens, anything that you may need as far as distributor gear. These are all made by Morel. And again, these checking fixtures were designed by John Callies almost two and a half decades ago. And we want to thank John for the opportunity uh, for uh, manufacturing these and giving us the blueprints and stuff on this stuff and letting us uh, engineer these things. So these will be available for a uh, lease program, whether you're an individual or whether you're an engine builder.